recorded. This is the Red Ticket Blues podcast starring Brian Buckley. That's me. And today is March 9th. Uh, I was more of a Tupac fan, but, uh, you know, Biggie had his day. And this will be recorded. Well, it's already being recorded on the 9th. It will hit the internet on March 10th. How's everyone doing? Everyone gotten over the hour change that happens every year that we all have to tell everyone about it, how difficult it was to get used to? It's an hour. Get over it. I think everyone just has to complain about things. And this is in the point where Brian gets on the podcast and then he complains about people complaining. Whatever. The one good thing about the daylight savings time is we spring forward and sunlight. I'm looking out. I usually do this podcast in the dark, in a desolate room, staring at the wall. Today, I have the window open. There's sun. I see snow melting. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, you mean, Brian, the stuff that you were complaining about, that you complained about the past few weeks, the weather? Shut up. I, 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 I see the irony. Anyways, how's everyone doing? We are on the cusp of March Madness, as Selection Sunday will be March 15th this coming Sunday. Everyone's looking forward to it. The number one seeds are pretty much in. You got Kentucky, Virginia, Duke, and most likely the next one will go to Villanova. The number two seeds... Number number two seeds will be who will they be? They are going to be Gonzaga, Arizona, Wisconsin. Who's the last one I'm thinking of off the top of my head? Shit, I'll remember. I'll remember at some point here today. What will be the other number two seed? Really, Brian? You're wasting time here doing this. Shut up. Uh, maybe Maryland? Would they get a number two seed? I don't know. Hey, let's move on. Uh, what else we got going on? Staying in college basketball, the the hammer comes down. The whip came down on Syracuse. Jim Beheim. did you have any doubt? Not happy with it. Can't admit fault. Don't worry. He, he's not done, he says. So we will talk about it. I'll talk about it. You'll listen to it. Uh, what else we got going on? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a free podcast. Completely potpourri. Why not? No, we got some some things to go over. Uh, boxing made its made its way back to to uh, cable television there on NBC on Saturday. Many of you didn't see it. It got decent reviews though. I think about three million on a Saturday night for boxing and not huge names. You had Adrian the Problem Broner in a very boring fight, and he, he is he, he's so unlikable. It, the only problem is. Uh, I guess the problem I have with him is he's a problem. He's he's an that was awful. Did you hear that? Red ticket blues. No, but the boxing was interesting. The second fight of the night was a good one. The the Broner one leaves little to be desired. We'll talk about soccer. Soccer? Yeah, soccer. As the New York club played in a game that was uh, important, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a soccer guy. I respect soccer fans because they're some of the most dedicated fans there are, but. I just wanted to go over my thoughts on soccer, and every year I hear soccer's going to be big in the United States. Every year, every year, I hear that it's 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 descending. It's going to it ripples, it ripples. It, say ripple again. It it that it's going to integrate itself into one of the major sports. I still haven't seen it, and I'll tell you why it will never happen ever. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of the injuries going on in Major League Baseball to some premier players because. Outside of that, there's really not much happening in baseball right now. Teams are still getting used to you. It's trying to feel each other out, see where the teams are at, what pitchers can do what. Yeah, like like a league, like a team. Yeah. Listen, I, I know I'm all over the place today. I uh, I, I've started to decrease my caffeine intake. My wife told me my teeth were getting too yellow, and I and I quit smoking a while ago. So it has to be the coffee, and I mean not yellow, yeah, like Al Troutwig wooden teeth George Washington looking but but you know yellow like you're at a honky tonk bar old man who's smoking Winston's drinking Budweiser yellow beady little teeth they're, they're, they 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 need a they need a facelift so I'm trying to back down on that not as much caffeine and this the, today was the first afternoon and I'm dragging I'm dragging I'll try my best though uh we start with we're going to start with with the the most pressing. Well, it's not the most pressing issue, but I find it to be one of the most important issues, and that's the penalties that came down for Syracuse University, the basketball program. And while 
they're not looking at any real postseason because the team has been down this year. And remember, they already gave themselves a self-imposed ban. They 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 saw the errors. They found that they decided that they were going to police themselves, which is very noble of them. However, we all knew it was a crack of shit. Uh, so what happened was the NCAA decided after their investigation that they were going to tell you exactly what the penalties were and not the university itself. So here it is. Here's a police report. Nine ACC suspension games for Jim Beheim. No, not the nine cupcakes that they usually uh, schedule before the season or sometimes during the season against Division II opponents. Syracuse is notorious for... I mean, every team gets crappy teams in the beginning, crappy opponents on their schedule in the beginning to inflate their schedule, inflate their record. But Syracuse is notorious for scheduling a poor out-of-conference schedule especially in the beginning of the season. I mean, they're, they're not even games. but So this is nine ACC. These are nine conference games that Jim Bayham will be at. That Now, there is no postseason ban going forward. They are still open for that. They're on five years of probation and, and recruiting trips for from now until 2017. Only two coaches will be on the road recruiting new players. Doesn't sound like a big deal. Well, normally they have four. There are usually four people out there trying to get those top recruits to come to upstate New York. There will only be there will only be two coaches in the future. A scholarship reduction. This is where it's going to hurt them the most. This is where it hurts any team the most. Those scholarships. They have 13 scholarships. Every team has 13 scholarships available to them. For the next four years, and Syracuse can decide when to do it, but they're going to lose three scholarships a year. Now, you hear people say, well... You got how many guys on the team? Big deal. Three scholarships. That's a big deal because not every guy you recruit turns out to be a star. You can get all the McDonald's Americans in the world. Some of them work out. Some of them go great. Some of them leave early and go to the NBA. And you look like a genius because you got the right guy. You look like the best motivator, the best, the best recruiter. Not all of them work out. And a lot of them just sit on the bench and, and play menial roles. And all of a sudden you got a team full of that. So... That's going to hurt them, obviously. They are fined $500 for every game that they played with ineligible players. And that would be a hundred and... I believe it's 110. I keep getting the numbers mixed up. Is it 508 or... Five, excuse me, 108 or 110? This is this is me doing uh, research in the middle of the podcast. Impressed? I'm sure you are. I believe it's 110. I have 108 written here, so I want to give you the most accurate amount, and not some amount that, not some amount that's not accurate. By that, that's good, Brian. You didn't have to say that out loud. All right, for whatever reason, I'm at Los Angeles Times here. Put it this way: he actually falls behind Jim Calhoun, and Jim Calhoun hasn't coached in a few years in the win total. He's never going to, for a long time. Well, for, for existence, Beheim was right behind Coach K as they were winning together, and Coach K just got his thousandth victory this year. Jim Beheim is not going to get that. Jim Beheim is 70 years old. He's 70. For the next four years, he is going to have three scholarships taken away, or not taken away, just not given to him. I think the days of Syracuse being a major team, a major, one of the college elite. Those days are over, at least with Jim Beheim there. I think he's done. I think he, they will still be competitive. Yeah, he's still going to get those guys. He's not going to get all of them because I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Jabari Parker. I don't care if you're Jaleel Okafor. You, I mean, you might be the best player in the country, but you know what? You notice those guys still go to good schools. Andrew Wiggins, they all go to good schools. They go to competitive schools. They They might be doing the one and done. I get it. But they still want to win. They still want to be on TV. And you know what? They're not going to want to go to Syracuse. They're going to see a team that's struggling. I couldn't care less if the team is struggling. That's my that's my drunk Jim Na- Joe Namath voice. Get it? I'm still trying to look up these these uh, these games. I know I need to move on, but what the hell? You know, it's my podcast. I can stall if I want to. That's what I do. All right, I'm, I'm sick of this. Who gives a shit? All right. Uh, it's convenient that 
apparently this academic uh, wrongdoings have been going on for nearly a decade. Now, Syracuse won the championship in 2003. And conveniently, conveniently, these uh, sanctions go back to right after that championship, right after Carmelo Anthony walked out the door to go to the NBA. Because there was actually some sort of negotiation. I'm negotiating. Exactly. Negotiation. With the NCAA. I mean, it's laughable. It it really is when you think about it. It's laughable to think that they can negotiate back to that. Well, that's that's what you get when you've been around for a long time and you're successful and you're one of the faces of the NCAA. Uh. Let's see, what else do we have here? Some of the violations, multiple failed drug tests that were ignored. There was the accepting of money from a booster at the YMCA and cash from coaches and players. Academic scandal going on for how long? I mean, the director of basketball operations there knew players passwords to their email and emailed the teachers as if they were them. This went on for a decade. A decade. This old curmudgeon in Jim Beheim, who never is wrong. Just ask him. Who, who tr- Again, I, I've talked about this on the podcast. He tries to make people feel small. Reporters that ask questions that he doesn't deem are v- uh, valuable enough for his time. He rips them apart. He wants to embarrass them on a national scale. The same guy who didn't know anything that was going on with Bernie Fine. His assistant coach for over 30 years. Well, I, I, I didn't know anything. Then called his called his uh his uh alleged victims. I'm not even going to get into the Bernie Fine. Forget that. But we'll move on from that. But now Jim was actually at a banquet this uh, a few days ago in Syracuse because well we'll go back to we'll begin before that. I'm all over the place. That's right. I need the coffee. Oh boy. Anyways, so. The first game after the hammer came down, Jim Boeheim, for the first time in his career, absent from the post-game press conference. Absent. Just wasn't there. Now, supposedly, the Syracuse told him that it would be a good idea with this, before we have an actual formal press conference, that maybe you just skip it. And I guess that's what Jim used as an excuse to not meet the press. But give me a break. Jim Boeheim does what he wants there. If he wanted to speak, he'd speak. It just seems cowardly in my in my opinion. He should have been there and he wasn't. He can give all the excuses that he wants. He can hide behind the academic press release, but we all know it's a bunch of crap. Now, he was at a conference, a uh, press conference, or I, I don't even know what it was, excuse me, some sort of uh, banquet in Syracuse a few days ago, and he talked a little about... Uh, Talked a little about how much Syracuse means to him and yada, yada, yada. Not, nothing really, never really actually addressed what's going on, basically, other than saying times are tough. Take a listen. There's a lot of things to be said, and, and uh, it, it, it's difficult at this time right now. I just am so appreciative to be able to come to a banquet and have 700 people come and, and support our basketball program. I'm so proud when we go on the road. It's, Mike said, and there's Syracuse people all over. That's something that we're all very proud of. That means a lot to us. I think there's a, a, a hell of a battle ahead of us. <clears throat> I came here in 1962. I'm not going anywhere. Yes, yes, cheer for the cheater. Yes, 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 cheer for him. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I'm not stupid enough to know that every coach cheats. It's been going on for a long time. Back to John Wooden, the great John Wooden, the Wizard of Westwood. It's happened. But I'm not going to sit there and cheer a guy when he's been doing this for over a decade. It's not like some MLB player who took steroids once and said, shit. Whoops. And he still can't even believe them. Sports is something that is predicated on cheating, getting a competitive edge. And if I'm going to sit there and cheer Jim Beheim, then what the hell does that make me? It makes me a fraud. It's the same way when I see, it's a little different. When I see 
Alex Rodriguez come to the plate for the Yankees this year, I'm going to cheer him. But I'm not going to wear some forgive t-shirt. Alex Rodriguez didn't take steroids and go, oops. <laughs> Did I not? Was, was I not supposed to do it? Was he going to play a Costanza and say, I, I shouldn't have done that. If, if I knew that was frowned upon, I would not have done that. So many times he'd done it. I mean, you start to lose sympathy for a person when they do something so many times. It's insanity to believe that person. And what's even funnier is after it came down and Syracuse was obviously disgraced, ESPN announcer Dick Vitale, the face of college basketball for as annoying as you may think he is, and I think he is too, he still is the face of college basketball. He is actually starting to put him on the B games now, not even doing Duke in North Carolina, which is, wow, that neighbor almost hit the fence there. Had the woman driving, usually the guy is. So. Whoa! That's how we do it here. Uh, what the hell was I talking about? I almost said, I'm hit the fence. He said that already. Uh, all right, Dick Vitale. Okay, so back to that. He gave this impassioned plea that Jim did not know anything about any of the academic Im- improprieties, any of the false, any any of these things going on. It's all false to think that he knew any part of it, allowed it to happen. Please cut the shit. All right, they're good buddies. Vitale is a fraud in that way. He's friends with a lot of the coaches. And you got to be fair. You, 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 you can't pick and choose. You, you can't see a guy get throw, you know, ripped to shreds and then say, oh, no, 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 come on, come on. Defend the guy tooth and nail. It's, it's pathetic. Take a listen. Well, you know, there's no question a coach has to be accountable for what happens within his program. However, Jim Beheim was guilty of one thing, trust. He had trust in his people, trust in his boosters from the YMCA, and they really violated that trust. They laid cash on some players. Jim Beheim was not aware they were getting cash. If he was, trust me, he would have done something. The same thing with the academic problems, or again, academic favors. The director of operations is handling that. A big shot right there from the corner. Very difficult to handle this whole problem in a matter of 20 seconds. But I will simply say this. I know Jim Behan. And people label him a cheater, should be fired. Absolutely is a joke. Shameless to say the least. Uh, I don't know anyone who would actually buy that garbage. They are friends. And I think uh, Vital is having some sort of charity uh, the, the golf tournament or something where Jim this summer is going to receive a reward, an, an, an award. How convenient is that? So that's Syracuse in a nutshell. Like I said, my prediction is they still, you could st- still be a top 25 team, but their days of consistently being a top 10 team are over. That is a black eye for that program. And Jim Beheim, like I said, is 70 years old. Guy looks good for 70. But how many 70-year-old coaches are, coaches are there? And by the time that these, if they decide to, Go with this uh, scholarship withdrawal this year. He, that won't end until he's 74 years old. So, yeah, he spent a lot of time on Syracuse here. Jeez, I've just been yapping and looking for games that I didn't write down. Good job out of you, Brian. Yeah, no, not really. Uh, quick hit in the warmer weather there in Arizona and Florida. In baseball spring training, like I said, not a lot going on, but... Two big pitchers you see in Texas pitcher U Darvish has an elbow injury, some sort of UCL uh, issue where it's most likely he will need Tommy John surgery. Missed the last 46 games last year with with uh, you know some uncomfortableness in that elbow. Kind of sad to see. I mean, the guy came out like a like a bat out of hell. I, I hate using cliches. That's sometimes why I stutter so much. I. I I hate using cliches. It sounds so shitty. So, but he he had such a promising future, and he's still young. But that that's sad to see him possibly miss the entire season. And then you go to the old spectrum of it. When I meet old, is Cliff Lee, who may not mean, need Tommy John surgery, but he's got some also some elbow issues. And ironically, he was going to be the one that the Rangers were looking at to replace you, Darvish. Again, just rumors, but who knows. What's going on in the Yankee camp? Alex uh, Rodriguez got some hits. That apparently was good enough to make the front and back page of the New York Post. 
we're dying for baseball. Such a shitty landscape going on in New York in return in regards to sports. Uh, they will do anything. Matt Harvey pitched, uh, made his first start in 18 months, dazzled the fans. Guy looked good. Everyone was ready to coronate him. Coronate? Is that the word? Yeah, coronate him. And I'm sure he would have allowed it. He is very fond of himself. The Connecticut native does love himself some Matt Harvey. But what else is going on? The, the Yankees I guess, apparently were very close to trading for Cole Hamels as the the, the Philadelphia Phillies are a firestorm of garbage, and they will be terrible this year. As they've already started to get rid of their pieces, they'd love to get rid of Cole Hamels and Ryan Howard. Good luck getting rid of Ryan Howard. But then it comes across that uh, you know the Yankees were. It was revealed that the Yankees were never actually f- close in the first place. So I'm not really sure of the point of the story, or even why I had to repeat the point of that irrelevant story. But it's interesting, I guess. Brian Cashman said that the Yankees will no longer, that they shouldn't have a captain anymore after Derek Jeter has ended his career with the Yankees because it should end with him. Just an odd statement to make. Uh, You know, if you ask 20 years ago, I'm sure someone would have said, no one is worthy of being the captain anymore. And then Derek Jeter shows up. He showed the intangibles that made himself the Yankee captain. I don't know how you can predict something like that. I don't know if Brian Cashman's just bored and just saying dumb things to annoy people or... Maybe following in the steps of George Steinbrenner, we all remember him now as he's passed as a great man who always did things right, but most of the time he said dumb things to just infuriate the fan base. So that's what we got going on there. Uh, I just want to talk about the boxing real quick. Like I said, Saturday night, I didn't even know it was on. I'm just going through the channels because I got a lot going on on my Saturday night that I'm just going through the channels, checking out the boxing. Uh, the Apparently, this is going to be something that's going on all the time. Uh, every Saturday night on NBC, it's uh, we started with Adrian Broner versus. Uh, boy, this is this is bad. Yeah, so Adrian Broner versus who was it against? I remember the other one was Keith Thurman versus Robert Guerrero, which was the the better of the two fights. This was that was the the prime time matchup. And that was a great fight. This guy Thurman, I, I'd never heard of either of the guys. I'm not going to lie. Boxing is a sport that's sort of, it's, I like boxing. I think the pay-per-view has killed it. The, now obviously you need some of the, the showmanship and the theatrics to to sell the sport for the pay-per-view purposes. Everyone doesn't want a boring fight. They want a lot to lead up to it so you'll watch it, but uh, boxing is almost a novelty at this point. It's it, it's it's only a few steps above WWE, and that's unfortunate because I like boxing, and we're and we're gonna get the we're gonna get the boxing match that we've all been waiting for on May second. I haven't talked about it in the podcast at all. Uh, it's Adrian Broner versus John Molina. Now Broner was dominating most of the time, but because Adrian Broner is the asshole of all assholes. The same guy who bit a security guard a few years ago in a, in a Miami hotel. The same guy who, when he found out his girlfriend was cheating on him, went to Twitter, obviously this is what you do, and said he's glad that he had an, she had an abortion and killed his kid. I think he actually said that. I mean, Adrian Broner is like Floyd Mayweather, but just not good. He's just not good. He did win this fight, though, and he won it pretty handily, and Probably if he actually was a little bit motivated, he probably could have knocked him out in the third or fourth round, but it did go the distance and he won the decision. But the uh, Robert Guerrero and Keith Thurman, Thurman, I'll tell you, Robert Guerrero, come on, you're going to pick one of them, you're going to talk about him, Brian. Keith Thurman was the better boxer there. This is a guy, up and coming guy that you could tell. He, he was landing some heavy shots on Guerrero, and Guerrero looked like he was dead to rights a few times. So he stayed with it, and it went the distance, too. I mean, it, it was pretty obvious that, that Thurman was going to win. It was pretty one-sided, but a lot of heart to Guerrero. I, I, you know, it really wasn't even that big of a deal, but it was just like seeing boxing when you don't have to pay for it is a great thing. It really is. And to that fight on May 2nd, the one we've all wanted to see, Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao, 89.95 was the last thing I saw. That's how much it's going to cost. That's a lot of money, man. That is a lot of money to put on a fight that's so unpredictable. Who knows what could happen? I think, exa- but in reality, I do know it's going to happen. It's going to be a close fight. 
ultimately, Floyd Mayweather is going to do what he does best and have his track shoes on, run around whenever he's in trouble, which he has that right. He has that right. Boxing Paris may not agree with it, but he has that right. And he's going to run around, run around, run around like it's a track. And he's going to win the decision. We all know it. I'm predicting it now. Save your 89.95. I'll probably go to a bar and watch it because I don't think I'm going to pay for that shit. So there you go. Uh, But I am happy to see boxing again. I know I'm repeating myself, but it is good to see boxing. And I'm glad that it's going to be a weekly thing. I'm very happy about that. Just, it's almost, I don't know. I don't know what to say about boxing. It's hard to defend it. I just, it's something that used to be the big thing. I mean, it, it was up there. It was it was something to talk about. It was, I don't know. I guess people can't even pick a division. What to, who, the heavyweight division used to be the big thing. Who's the, who's the champion now? One of the, one of the clutch goes, right? But they don't even, they don't even fight. And when they, I, I don't know. I don't I don't know what to say. Soccer had something going on. I'm sorry people. I'm just all over the place today. This is This is me adjusting to lack of caffeine. Oh god. There was a big soccer match. New York has its uh a a team this year that will be playing Yankee Stadium will actually be on the radio on WFAN in New York. That should be interesting. I give credit to soccer fans, like I said before, earlier in the podcast. They're some of the most dedicated fans they are. You know why? Because they have to watch the biggest stars, and they have to wake up early to watch them, or they have to watch them on tape delay. They have to watch things in other countries. And I'm not a soccer fan, but I respect soccer enthusiasts. I watch the World Cup. That's good. But it's never going to happen here because of the time change. With All the best players play in Europe. None of them play here. Every once in a while, you get a Pele. You get a David Beckham when they're on the end of their career. You don't have those consistently. I, I, I want I want all the players playing here. I want Ronaldo. I want the, the Messi. I want all those guys playing here. Then we'll talk. I still don't think it'll take off there. I think it's too boring for American fans. Yet they love baseball. But I don't think we can ever accept ties. I, is this all uh, xenophobic-like rhetoric? Yeah, a little bit, but I don't know. Every year I'm told it, it's it's going to make waves. It'll be here, but I never see it. And with NFL, with the moving on to the NFL, just completely schizophrenic podcast. You're going to have to deal with it. You're a dedicated listener. You're going to have to deal with it. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm talking about. This is rough. This is me scratching my chin saying, Brian, this is essentially, this is truly rambling at this point. That's okay. That's okay. I can deal with that if you can deal with it. Remember, at Brian Buck 13 you want to hear rambling. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that rambling. Uh, the NFL, the tomorrow when this is actually being premiered to the internet, NFL uh, free agency starts at 4 o'clock, it's actually already started. Lots of things have happened, but it can't be actually released until 4 p.m. tomorrow. And Dominican Sue to the Dolphins, big deal, big risks. You got a guy that obviously has behavioral problems. And giving $100 million to any player is rough, especially when they're not they're not a quarterback. But I mean, even to any player, in a game like football where anyone can get their ass beat, $100 million is a ton of money. I think $60 million of that's guaranteed. Uh, What else is happening? Patrick Willis and Justin Smith, two defenders for the 49ers, are retiring. So that is a big hit. Frank Gore leaves the 49ers as well. He will fill uh, LaShawn McCoy's spot with the Eagles and Jim Harbaugh, obviously. Earlier this year, had left the 49ers to join the University of Michigan football team as their head coach. 49ers, all of a sudden, ghost town. A lot of retooling to do there. Colin Kaepernick, stop kissing himself. Stop those mirrors. Stop trying to degrade people on Twitter. You got your work cut out for you, bruh. So, um, I just wanted to end today with the Yale basketball team lost a heartbreaker to Dartmouth that would have clinched a NCAA berth for the Elis. I guess they're first in a very long time. 
Got a year on that, Brian? Hey, you know, I'm just going to, you know, shit the breeze here as I try to figure that out. But no, I can still talk at the same time. Uh, they lost a heartbreaker to Dartmouth 59-58, to and they play... Uh, they play, they play, uh, let's see. And on March 14th, Yale will play uh, Harvard in a one-game playoff to see who will get that automatic bid from the Ivy League. And I'll be rooting for, you know, I, nobody roots for the Ivy League in anything because they're rich, entitled, pompous jerks. Many of them. I mean, that that's their, that's the, the, their their reputation i'm not saying every person is but i'd like to say i want to root against yale because as a resident of new haven i have to deal with these jerks every day as they step out in the middle of traffic as if cars don't apply to them they may have been fed with a silver spoon they may be the smartest people in the world they are very inept at reading traffic signals or even identifying a large piece of steel known as a car coming toward them. And if you lay on the horn and yell things at them, they look at you as if you have five heads. For that reason alone, I'd like to root against the Elis. But then as I'm thinking about it, in the middle of the podcast, I'm actually thinking about it. Brian, how do you think Harvard's any different? In the middle of Cambridge, I'm sure they're exactly the same. They're probably even more jerks there because they have this little wonderland, this oasis of education throughout the whole town. Maybe there are bad areas of Cambridge. I don't know. At least in New Haven, they have their pockets of nirvana everywhere. But behind, but the, the, the locals infiltrate it too. So while well, they might be in the standard excellence of education in one sense, in the other sense you have a man that's peeing on the ground uh, begging for change. So that is the beauty of the Elm City. So... You know, I started out this little rant saying that I want Yale to lose, but do I? Yeah, I guess I do, just because I, I know, th- I was going to say I identify with them. I do not identify with them. I identify with nothing they have to say, except for maybe dodging homeless panhandlers. But what are you going to do? The, the, one of them's going to win, and then we're going to have to root for the quote-unquote little guy, which is the biggest farce. Root for the little guy, the Ivy League. They haven't done it in a while. Just because they're not good at sports doesn't mean they're going to own you and run you later in life, I guess. And there was a huge crowd at Harvard to actually watch the Yale game to see if this playoff game would happen. A crowd of about yeah, 15 people or so. And boy, they, they really partied it up that night. As they're, they're, they're Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide, that's Alabama. They're Crimson. Go to... They're going to play on a uh, neutral floor, I believe, in Philadelphia to actually get that down. Yeah, neutral floor of Palestra. I don't know where that is. Honestly, I don't care. So that's the podcast for this week. And I apologize for the scatterbrainness. Scatterbrained. My scatterbrain like BS this week, all over the place. And I fully attribute it to caffeine. Where is my caffeine? Where's my elephant? That that's that's all I have to say. I want to thank everyone for listening as always. The website is www.redticketblues.com. My Twitter name, of course, at @brianbuck13. Be one of the many followers that gets to hear what I have to say on a daily basis. Read my retweets, read my my whimsical comments about life itself. You can find the podcast on iTunes, on what else? On TuneIn Radio and on YouTube. You can listen in your car. You can listen in your cubicle, desk. You want to tune people out, throw the earbuds in. And hey, if, if you're really feeling up to it, even leave a rating. I mean, let's not go crazy. I understand. You have things to do. I mean, typing out two sentences and a rating, then uh, it's above some people. Below. Above. Below. Not sure. Okay, I've kept you here way too long. I will see you, hopefully. Like I said, I'm going to be doing some uh, some podcast in between, some little fireside chats uh, about certain topics that I just can't fit in here because I'd just be rambling even more so. I want to keep it condensed, small podcast. I don't want people to have to sit through and agonize through something like they may have to do today. But thank you very much. Love, be on the lookout for those. And if you subscribe, 
week. You won't even have to worry about seeing if it came out. I am out of here. See ya.